Let's talk about this 45 auto ramp. Welcome to the range in Wood County, Texas. We fired about the first 10 shots out of it and so far I am impressed. We've tried two different 200 grain semi wad cutters. Both of them are shooting about an inch at 10 yards. Of course 10 yards is nothing to brag about but really just testing these for function and they are doing really well so let's try these cowboy bullets this is 170 grain round nose flat point it's loaded pretty hot let's see if it'll hold the paper as well as the semi wide cutters well <laughs> it's right in the center of the target paster I don't know how you could be any better let's see if I can get four more on there like that I am going to like this bullet that's two touching right in the center this 170 grain bullet is doing right at a thousand feet per second according to the load manual. We'll get the chronograph out here in a minute and find out for sure. But I really like the way it shoots. It recoils just like a full load 357 in an end frame. My Model 27 recoils almost identical to that. with a mid-range load this is just a mid-range I think mid-range is all you're going to ever going to get out of this short of cartridge it's not a magnum well I pulled that one low or it went low only about an inch but it's out of the group Now we're back in the group. I'm really impressed with this bullet at this distance. We'll have to work with this one for a while. Well, that's four, three in one hole and two in another. <laughs> that's a about a three inch paster and they're all on the paster three of them in the center and two on the bottom edge or towards the bottom so it's about an inch group I'm surprised I didn't know if those would really hold their own they're doing well when I first got this revolver years and years ago I was disappointed in it. It didn't hold groups very well. And it was actually my learning curve. The cylinders are 452 cylinder throats. If you try to shoot a regular jacketed ammo out of it, it doesn't do very well. Of course, most jacketed ammo is 451. These are lead bullets back in about 453, between 452 and 3. I do I did test every one, and they all have to be driven through the cylinder throat. So they're all larger than the cylinder throat. But none of them were shaved when I drove them through, so they're not a lot larger. But they did require some effort, so I know they're sealing the cylinder throats well. 
Let's go top left corner. This is a 200 grain round nose flat point. That is a stiff load. But it's right in the center. Touching the first one. I'm gonna like this one too. The trouble is, now that I've learned that it likes a slightly oversized bullet, it seems to like every kind of bullet I throw through it. And of course, that makes me like it a lot. I pulled that one low. That was my bad. It's about an inch out of the group. And that's what we get. We get one hole for four rounds and one I pulled low. Been doing that a bit lately. I think I'm gonna have to get me some of those glasses made for people my age. Not reading glasses, which I have. My distance vision is fine. But I need reading glasses that are designed for arm's length, I think. <laughs> Go down to the optometrist and tell them I want reading glasses that focus on the front sight. How about that? Let's try these 250s. These 250s, I got a feeling, are going to be mild. I stuck with the book, and the book was very conservative. But since I was loading all of these bullets for the first time I stuck with the book I may work with them later after I've tested velocities but let's test accuracy first before I get tired and then we'll put the chronograph out 257 grain bullet five and a half grains of unique Well, it's not that mild. It's milder than the others. It just hit about three inches high. And the next one's right to it. If I'm gonna stick with this heavy a bullet, this recorder will require a sight adjustment. The other bullets I fired is three 200 grainers and 170 grainer. And uh, they're not going to require any sight adjustment between the two. The 170 seems to shoot the same point of aim as the 200s. But this 250. 257 actually. is going to shoot about two and a half inches high. Now that may come down once I speed it up a little bit. But it's shooting a group, that's for sure. There's no stabilization problems here. Wow. That may be the best group of the day even if it's off the paster. Let's look at the brass. Those may not be that conservative. They're certainly not over pressure. My plus P loads, factory plus P loads definitely flatten the primer more than that. But none of these are really doing anything to the primer. They're all well within the safe range. 
that primer is not really flat but it's as flat as anything else out here that 200 grain load I was shooting with seven and a half grains of unique I believe see what I wrote down I always check my notes uh, yeah that was seven and a half the one before last and then this heavy one was 5.4 and the primers look about the same I thought that load was light we'll have to get the chronograph out and see what it's doing but all of those shot really well let me carry you down range hope I don't make you motion sick and have a look at that target then we'll grab the chronograph Okay, this center one is a 200 gram Rainier plated bullet. It's a pretty good group. This bullet right here is a Missouri Bullet Company semi wad cutter, 200 grain. This over here is the 170. A little vertical stringy could be me I basically got two groups there this is the 200 round nose flat point that one pulled a low I told you about all the rest of them are in one hole and this is the 250 as you can tell it's a really tight group only one outside of the same hole Well, welcome back to the shed. You are the luckiest viewers in the history of YouTube if you're still watching this. Or the most patient. Because my camera gave up and spared you 30 minutes of watching me shoot over a chronograph. I uh, got the camera going again and then after reviewing the footage of shooting over the chronograph I decided that the camera was right in the first place when it shut off <laughs> I'm just going to show you the target and to talk about the results for a minute I try to make it quick this is the first group I fired with the auto rim cartridge it's a 200 grain plated semi wad cutter from Rainier they are actually .4515, which is a little small for my pistol. The chamber throats on the pistol are 452. This is a 10 yard five shot group. It was loaded with seven and a half grains of unique. and gave me 1037 feet per second. The standard deviation of 23. And it's a decent enough group. It's about the best I can expect from a bullet that's slightly under, undersized for the chamber throats. And let's move on. This is the second group I fired today at the target. This is a 200 grain semi wad cutter lead bullet from Missouri Bullet Company. Unlike all the others, it was not loaded with Unique. It was loaded with Winchester Super Field, which is a powder I've always used in the 9mm for the 147 grain bullets but it was in the load book it is a whole lot cleaner than unique so I decided to give it a try even though I don't have much experience with it outside of the 9 millimeter obviously this gun likes it uh, that's seven grains of WSF the standard deviation was only eight at a thousand and thirty one feet per second 
Now there were no pressure signs with any of these loads, but as you can see the performance is pretty good. Now let's move. Here we are at the first of the cowboy bullets. These are all from Desperado Cowboy Bullets LLC. They're on the internet if you'd like. Uh, this is 170 grain round nose flat point. I tried them just on a lark. Ordered a 100 round sample. And they have a really short bearing surface. But they shoot really well. It's a little vertical stringing here. I'm not sure it's pleased with the powder charge. But the standard deviation is only 13. So it's not outside the ballpark. It's a 7.8 grains of unique at 1,091 feet per second. It's a very pleasant shooting load. And let's move on. I'd say this round was the winner for today. It's a 200 grain round nose flat point. That one outside the group is a called flyer. I called it when I shot it. All the rest of them are in a ragged hole. And that hole is... <laughs> that's probably a half his group. Center to center. Except for the flyer. The standard deviation is only three. This also is 7.5 grains of unique. 1,082 feet per second. Now let's go over and look at the 55s. I was also really impressed with this bullet. It's a 250 grain round nose flat point. The actual rate is 257. These Desperado bullets are cast pretty soft. One part 10 to 20 parts lead. But I haven't had any leading issues. I fired about 60 rounds today with these soft lead bullets many of them over a thousand feet per second and I just went through the pistol and I don't have any leading at all so they're obviously doing something right but uh, this group is also inch or so all five rounds four rounds in the big hole and one just outside at the bottom they're doing 855 feet per second but I'm only using five and a half grains here. Although the primers looked a lot like all the others. So the pressures may be higher due to the weight of the bullet. I'm sure they are, but they may be quite a bit higher with less powder. Standard deviation was 19, which is not really bad. I am looking forward to trying this heavy bullet with WSF because it's really a heavy bullet powder. I only use it in the 9mm for bullets 147 grains and higher. And I get really low standard deviation numbers. So that'll be my next try with this bullet. But I, I really do like this bullet. It shoots a little high but after chronographing I had rounds left over and started shooting at the 100 yard gong. We have a 12 inch gong hanging at 100 yards. Most guys shoot at it with their deer rifle. And I didn't want to shoot at this target anymore and mess it up. So I just started firing rounds at the foot 12 inch gong at 100 yards. And I was hitting it with a regularity with a dead on hole with this bullet. So it's shooting a couple of inches high at 10 yards, but that's putting it right on at 100. So I'm not going to worry about changing the sights for it. Oh, just let me add, if uh, I'm not sponsored by anybody, and I've got nothing to sell you, but if you own a Smith & Wesson 25 or 625, or a Colt 1917 that uses moon clips 
you really should give these auto rim cases a try they're strong they seem to be more consistent because you don't have the springiness of the moon clip cushioning the hammer blow and uh, they're obviously accurate I'm not afraid to push the performance on them a little bit uh, I hardly recommend these auto rim cases thank you very much